When I started the BMW, I had the goal of doing everything myself from designing, fabrication, welding, painting, serial coating. I wanted to learn everything, but especially since this is my first project, this approach really holds me back. And since I noticed that, I quickly wanted to pick up on something that Otis said. One tip for like a first time builder, what would it be? Don't be afraid to ask for help. This is one thing that a lot of people, including myself when I was younger, kind of like, oh, I'll find a way of doing it myself. Ask for help. It's one of the best things you can do because it's how you learn and it, you know, people enjoy you know sharing their knowledge with other people. So ask for help. If I hadn't have had the help, I wouldn't have been able to do it at all. It would have taken me much longer. It would have cost me a lot more money, yeah. and the finish wouldn't have been as good. Over the months that I'm building the BMW now, I've learned that that is great advice. That's probably the best advice someone can give you. But when I think back to when I started with a BMW build, this advice would have been very abstract to me because. I didn't know a lot of people building custom bikes or being welders or anything like that. So it was very hard for me to imagine where I could get help for, I don't know, welding the rear frame, stuff like that, like handy stuff, you know what I mean? And maybe it's the same for you. Maybe you don't have anyone who builds custom bikes and knows their way around. And that's also why I asked Otis how he meets these people. And this is what he said. You have to talk. You talk and you look and you, if, you, if you're passionate about it, they will find them, they'll find their way to you. It's as simple as that. So to make this a bit more tangible, I thought I would just share a few stories about the BMW project where I got stuck and how I found people who were willing to help me with it. My first very big problem I ran into were the exhaust nuts. Those were so tight that I feared to strip them. I hope that with this one and some heat, I won't break them because they are supposed to be very fragile. Oh, no, nothing moves. That was the time when I didn't have anyone who could help me. So I looked online, but most videos are rather unspecific when it comes to these specific problems. So I asked someone from our shared workshop in Berlin who had built a few BMWs before and he recommended me to get a very special wrench. Let me see if I can find it. it should be here. This special wrench that fits perfectly on the star nuts and also use some heat, but not the blow dryer heat that I use first, some proper heat. Yes, it moves. So I got this blowtorch and that made it a lot easier and I got the nuts off. So maybe you can find a community workshop in your area I know that's not super likely, but you could also check out some professional, small, local motorcycle workshops. They're always kind of willing to help you if you go there and let them do something else on your bike down the road. So the second problem that I ran into were the handlebars. And I wanted to install the motor gadget indicators, but for that you have to drill out the handlebars. The problem was, why? I mean, why don't they work? The drill didn't fit. So I went to our neighbor's house who are painters and asked them for their cordless drill. Nice, I've got one from our neighbor and this one actually fits. Okay, so that does not really work. So I had to find another solution and that's how I met Andy. And Andy is a genius when it comes to building custom motorcycles. His whole life is about building custom motorcycles. But how do you get to know someone like that? Well. It came through my girlfriend's mom, actually. I just asked her, like, do you know anyone who knows how to work on bikes? And she was like, yeah, let's have a walk. And we passed by his house. Huh? He's super nice. And he helped me out with the handlebars. So it comes through random connections. I know that it can feel weird to ask for help, especially if you don't really know the people or if they're super busy like Andy is. He's always busy recording his own YouTube videos, but maybe you have a skill that they need and that you can help them with. Think outside the box. Maybe you can mow the lawn, design something, whatever your special talent is, offer it to them. The easiest way probably to find out what they actually need is just to ask them, hey, can I do something for you in return? For example, I was super happy when Andy asked me if I could 3D print a part for his bike, because that way I could return the favor and help him for yeah. once. Yeah. 
and another random connection I had when I started MIG welding. Okay. That didn't work at all. I've burned the wire right into this thing. I had a very hard time getting everything to work because I have to say, I was kind of afraid of electricity and all this stuff that's going on. I didn't really know what I was doing. What I have created so far... <laughs> I guess that's a rookie mistake. It is super hot. Right, that does not look good at all. I have created nothing but useless, useless. And I wanted to have someone kind of like professionally show me how it's done. So I asked around. I started with my girlfriend's mom because she lives here. She was like, no, I don't know, but my friend's son-in-law, he's a professional smith and welder. So I was like, okay, could you like get me in touch with them? So through these different links, totally random, I got to meet that guy, Niels. He's super nice and he showed me how to weld for an afternoon. So that's another way how you can find people. Just ask around your family, friends, old schoolmates, who knows what they're doing now. And the initial people you ask don't even have to be like into motorcycles or something like that. Just ask them if they know someone. And then through these different connections, you might end up getting to know someone who can help you with what you have to do on the bike. Another great way to get tips and feedback is actually to share your stuff online. Either take some pictures, post them on Instagram or make stories, or you shoot a quick video, upload it to YouTube, whatever you feel comfortable with. And that way I got so much feedback for the BMW project. I got so many tips for specific problems I had. For example, when I drilled out the handlebar to have holes for the cables to run through, I had very sharp edges and I used a little file to fire the edges. I hope that this helps at least a little bit. I don't know how much it really does. But obviously that's not very practical. So I posted that video and Drew commented underneath, hey, have you heard about reversible countersinks, which is the actual tool you would use for something like that. Some people have pointed out a few things that I could improve on, especially Drew, who pointed out that I should get a set of reversible countersinks. So I got the reversible countersinks and it's perfect. It worked perfectly. End of the story is that Drew and I are now super good friends. We text every day. We went to the bike shed show together. So you never know what happens if you post your stuff online. And at this point, I just quickly want to take a moment to thank all of you for the feedback, for the tips, for the support. I really appreciate that. Always keep them coming. That makes building the bike quite a lot easier. So thank you. The rear frame was another thing I really needed help with. The BMW has a kind of long rear frame. And it's just way too long to look good. So I wanted to have it shortened. And I guess if you're building a custom bike, you're probably also thinking about changing the frame in some way or another. The thing is, as I've said in the beginning, with my initial plan to do everything myself, it would have taken ages for me to learn to tick weld that well, that I would be confident to put someone else on the back seat and ride around on my own weld. So I came to the point where I thought, if I want to progress with a bike, I guess I have to find someone who can help me with that for the first one. And then on the second bike, I can do it myself. So I just asked around. And again, there was a super random link that got me connected with Nickel, who then shorted my rear frame. We were at my girlfriend's aunt's and uncle's house and they just bought a sailing boat and told us about someone who welded for them to repair the boat. So I was like, who's that guy? Can I meet him? And they were like, hey, yeah, actually he has a few bikes in his garage as well. So why don't we connect you? So I texted him, Nickel actually came to my house, checked out the rear frame, came up with a plan that was much simpler than what I had in mind. And last week I took the rear frame, went over to his workshop and he took out 10 centimeters. And showed me all the little tricks and tips that he knows from having done this quite a few times that I would definitely not have thought of if I wanted to do it myself. So if you want to know how to professionally chop a rear frame, watch this video next.